my name is Juan Boletic. Um, I want to start by thanking you for being here today. Uh, I want to thank FAST, Universidad Nacional de Quilmes, and the public universities in Argentina that cost us every year for this conference. Um, I want to thank Maximo and Alnan for using Quiz for teaching, for building and maintaining Quiz University, and for helping many people use it. I want to thank Maximo for starting this movement that today means that Buenos Aires is a world-class small talk center. And I want to, to thank Hiller for Dr. Gio for adopting Quiz for building Dr. Gio. Um, for writing the quiz book and for so many uh, nice words about quiz. Thank you all. So uh, this talk is about the project I've been working on for most of this year. It is about bootstrapping smart talk images from scratch. It is part of a larger effort to make a quiz meet the needs of commercial projects like those developed at Labware. So I also want to thank Flapware for sponsoring this project. This one. What is the problem we are trying to solve here? We want to, to bootstrap, to build new images, new small dot images exclusively from their source code. Uh, we want to have full control over their content. Uh, we want to include arbitrary code and in classes and methods we want or need. Uh, we want also to support arbitrary image formats and bytecode sets, and we want to support different VMs that may provide a different set of features. So why do we want to do this? Uh, maybe we are developing end user applications and we need a runtime that doesn't include development tools, that doesn't include a compiler, that doesn't include any source code at all. Uh, or maybe we are shaft building a new small top system uh, and we want to have reproducible builds and we want to enable inspecting our builds and be able to understand exactly where each bit in the image comes from. Additionally, we want a new image that is small under our control uh, is not restricted by the design of some model image it should be. Uh, we want the tools to build it to be under our control and those tools to be able to evolve uh, and we want when we build an image uh, we don't want to pull in the gorilla the whole channel when all we want it was the banana right so why you solve this need um, how are small talk images built? The, um, the last ancestor of We Small Talk that was with straps from, from scratch was Small Talk 76. Since then, every released image of Small Talk 80, Squeak, and Quiz was derived by applying updates to the previous one. So, in order to build a Small Talk model of everything that will be part of our new image, we need to describe the graph of objects it will include. Uh, for each of these objects, we need to store some information that is usually hidden by the VM in a standard running system, but that is essential because we are able to save a new small talk image that can later be run. Um, for this, we create a foreign object, what we call a foreign object for each object that will be created in the new image and build an ob object graph with them. There are many different kinds of foreign objects, and this reflects the fact that some objects have exist as variables, while others have, for example, indexes slots like arrays. Uh, still, other objects are made of bytes or some other numeric <laughs> values, and yet other objects uh, encode their value in the pointers to it, uh, like small integers, so they hold no state at all. Mm. This is a hierarchy. These are the foreign object classes uses the regular uh, to model regular small dog options. Um, each one of them knows how to create a real object of its type when serializing the object file. As you can see, 
in, in parentheses, the East Australia is official those classes. Uh, you can see that allocated objects calls and uh, the pointer in memory where the real object will reside and the identity hash people will use. Uh, in immediate foreign object has neither because immediate objects don't use memory um, as they are encoded in the pointer to them. Um, back. So this means that creating this foreign object and creating the object graphs is also allocated to memory in the new image. The moment that memory gets allocated and pointers get assigned uh, is when we build this graph. Uh, also, these foreign objects form a, a sequential uh, eigenkit list. They have a, uh, a next in the list in task variable. So they are, they represent at the same time the object graph, but it's also an inkit list. It has a sequential order, and this is the order of allocation and the order they will be saved in a, in a image. Uh, additionally, these are other part of the hierarchy of foreign objects, and these are the foreign objects used to create smart of code entities in the near image. The represented object uh, that is held in that as variable is, will not be a class or a method, but instances of uh, new classes called class spec and method spec. Still, it's only not that will create the real classes and methods in the near image. And the most important ones here are uh, those for classes, meta classes, and compound methods. We also been foreign object for method dictionaries. And these foreign objects form the meta model of the new world of image. The object graph they form is not unlike existing classes and meta classes and method dictionaries and compiled methods, but they form a completely separate object class. Besides, as they will be used for serializing them to a new image and not for executing them in the current image on BN, the services they offer are completely different. Okay, so these are not uh, classes and methods. Our... So, uh, I already talked about the foreign object that make the object grass. But for small talk code elements, we use this class spec and, and, and method specs. We want to build a new small talk image that includes essentially small talk code. Um, we could think that our existing small talk image already includes a model for small talk code. Um, that is true, but we don't need or want to run this code in the old image. So Bootstrapping built a new model for small talk code that is completely separated and dependent from the existing classes and method of the image that runs the bootstrap tool. The model for the code in the new image, therefore, is made of class specs and method specs. Um, these objects include all the required information to be later materialized as classes and methods in a random system, and they are not part of the cost image meta model. This means that the classes and methods that we include in a new small talk image reliability don't need to resemble those in our existing system. We could even model new kinds of classes, and not only those who are by our host VM. For this case, it's trivial to model immediate floats or characters in a system that doesn't support them. And this feature could have made an iteration of squeak and quiz to crushers and spur much easier and less hacky in the past if we have something like this. Uh, additionally, any references from these objects are controlled very carefully, so that there is no risk of unwanted objects leaking into the new image. Um, so in order to turn this object graph into a new smart image, it comprises of a real object we need as an image builder. The main purpose of an image builder is to traverse the collection of foreign objects, and for each of them write the bits of the object here, and then write the outward pointers or literal bytes for the object contents. Um, Format-specific image readers also know how to build format-specific data structures, um, image file header, and other delicate days. Uh, currently, we have image builders for 32 and 64 
flavors of the school we have in English format. Um, the, the new meshes could be very different from the existing image. Not only uh, it will do a different set of classes and method, but it could even run on a VM with different execution semantics. So this means that we cannot run any code that we love in the new image until that image is built, set the disk, and run by itself on its appropriate VM. We cannot run any of those that code in our tool. We don't have execution semantics for that potential. It also means that we can't create arbitrary objects for the new image in our build tool because the build tool runs in the old image and doesn't include those classes. Because of this, um, by default, image window will only create a few specific kinds of, of objects. Objects of code, classes, meta classes, compiled method, method dictionaries, one system dictionary, and basic details. Um, in, in short, this means that our bootstrap images will only include small talk code. It is just a very small set of special objects, like a system dictionary, a single table, uh, up and processor objects, and very few others that are required for the VM. Uh, to write. Any other objects, for example, additional globals and class variables must be created in the new image by code included as part of it and only when the new image is written by itself. So this has been pretty quick so far. Um, so I will do a demo. But now I think it I will do after the presentation because I don't want to mess with the this place and the way he notice showing the stuff that is okay now. So I will do the demo afterwards. Hopefully, uh, sorry about that. I didn't think that would be written before. Uh, so uh, existing alternatives to to this project. There have been several previous attempts to create images from scratch in the small okay, this week file with Nanesh, um, but for different reasons. They didn't quite solve the problem we needed to solve here. So the only this one comes from small talk AD. It was in by Ted Keller. It's called uh, System Tracer. It closed a running image from he, from inside itself, potentially in a different format, but it will only clone the contents of that image. So it doesn't solve our problem at all. It's interesting. Later, uh, Nathan Madoni in in Squeak created Micro Squeak uh, to do this. Uh, he created a parallel uh, object for a uh, object hierarchy for a complete different object hierarchy for his new image as part of the host image. And uh, it can be said that Bootstrap is a derivative of this work. Um, some parts resemble the little bit. And the, one of the main differences is not using classes to model the classes. Because doing it this way, um, there are a lot of assumptions that will be the same, of course, in both images. But also, the, there is only one meta model, so it's only linked together. So separating them to save the new image requires very great deal and complicated goal. Hacky, it's, it's not comfortable to work for So when, as a reaction to this, is that I decided to create a separate chef graph and small dot meta model. Uh, then we have a uh, spoon, spoon uh, built by Craig Ladder in the Squid World. And he, what he did is a minimal image that can dynamically load code from a mother image. It's cool. It may be useful in a lot of context, but we you don't control what's in there. It's essentially a kind of mud stripping tour that only brings into our running image whatever is actually used. Uh, so it's interesting, but not what we want. And then in South of Faro was track, uh, made by Bishop Bonito for, for the Faro system and community. 
What they did is to use VM Maker. VM Maker is a tool for simulating and building this quick virtual machine. So it includes a full model of the virtual machine and not just an image and as what of a model. Um, and it's actually code that was built for something different. So it doesn't have a good API for doing this kind of work. Uh, and the result is extremely complex, uh, really hard to work with. Uh, and it also, of course, has a few limitations. It will only generate images in the formats that the maker knows, of course. Uh, we also have this newer project, Tiny Tools, made by Eric Stell, uh, using Faro, Strap, and Faro. Um, she builds. Instead of strapping a big image, uh, a minimal image, a big like spoon, and pulls all dynamically so my mother image. Uh, it's interesting, it, it sort of combines the properties of, of spoon and fire with strap. So, that's all. None of them did what we wanted, so we needed to uh, do it anew. Um, that will okay with that. This is the current stake of Ultra. The framework is designed with all those ideas and is hopefully easy to extend. Uh, but so far, we are only using the existing Wiz compiler. So that means that we, right now, we cannot change lang language semantics. We will need to uh, have programmable con compilers uh, that generate different formats of, of compiled methods or, or, or compiled enough information to materialize compiled methods. Um, right now, so we are using the quiz compiler, we are using the quiz by code set. And right now, we only have builders for sport image formats. But uh, the knowledge of the sport image format is well organized there. So is it is mostly building a new builder for a new image format to support all the image formats. So that's the ceremony is designed for that, and this is the first iteration. These are some of the things that, that we can do in the future, build uh, a pluggable compiler infrastructure tool for compilers that can go straight from source code files to method specs um, and new image builders. So, that's all for the demo. We have until like 10 minutes, so hopefully I can show you a little bit of all this. I will exit this. So now I will start a quick Well, this um, yeah, the resolution is rather low, so we don't have much uh, screen space. So, yeah, <laughs> we'll see how we fit all the stuff here. Yeah, I, I could, yes, let's make everything a bit smaller. Let's see, can you see that menu one? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. Okay. So I prepare this small workspace and uh, like you from the first thing that we do when we start our fresh images to update it to the current state of our repo and then I will know the bootstrap package. And I will also, most likely we will not be running the test. Uh, additionally, um, Felipe will give a talk, a talk this afternoon on compiled uh, libraries. So let's see some code. Um, this is one method in image builder. Okay. So we have this, as we said, this image builder hierarchy. And we have some methods to build some sample images. Uh, this is our first example. It will be 
what is today a minimal image of, of this flavor. Um, building a small image is adding some, I, I, I will not go into details here and uh, I will be able to show more detail to anyone who wants because we don't have much time. So just let me build the image and this site a file in our folder and this as you can see from the dates they are it was just built uh, it's uh, less than uh, one hardly than 50 kilobytes and what this image does is run this method and this method goes to standard output and prints a little stuff so let me open a little terminal window here and drop it over here. So in order to save a little time, I have this command line here. This just stops IBM with that image as an argument. And we're sewing. Yes. Yeah, there it is. So that thing much runs. That you know the warning is a uh, open slot OPM small bit end on the Mac that is complaining that Apple wants something a bit different. Not a bit different, and, and it is with any much run. So it's even out here. So we have uh, exactly what we uh, wanted to create, okay, including doing a little bit of, of math, okay. So let's try some other examples that are sort of more. This is pretty important because this adds support for does not understand, and this is really necessary uh, to have a healthy uh, life, a mentally healthy life. If you are building a new image and telling it exactly what to include, if you don't come with another that's not understand support, it's impossible to know what went wrong. And I've been like that for a couple of days until I prevented this gun working and then everything was is reasonably easy again. So yes, it runs. Uh, what this one does, yes, it runs. This is the dot method that is exactly the same as before, but then it says small box for. And that is that system dictionary doesn't understand so. Uh, we have a stack here. The stack is only one level because it was a top level method, but it can bring a stack trace. So this is very really useful and offer to um, We're short of time. This adds floating, falling, floating point that's like 30 or 40 kilobytes of code and also works. And these are some experiments I have to them. I, I would just jump to example 06. Example 06. Starts the same and then it it does this. It checks if we have a glass with this name, okay? And it prints whether it, that glass exists or not. And then this is what Felipe will show you the afternoon. It loads a library. It asserts that the library can be loaded and it loads list. And then I, again, we check if that glass exists or not. And then we call code on that glass. Okay. So, yeah. Hopefully, this will also work. There it is. Uh, do we include the library? No. Let's go. Do we include the library? Yes, we do. And the result is one, two, three. So, we could go browse that code and think that that is a correct result. Just last me, we don't have much time now. And then. The size of this image that can load any electronic small talk code via initial and pre-combined libraries is a bit over 
200 kilobytes. Um, this let me show the last example. I will do it even quicker. The properties, the size and everything is quite similar to the previous one. And what we're doing here is to load two libraries, one includes uh, a bit less than four hundred methods and uh, quite a bit of source code and the other one is over one megabyte of source code okay this one takes eight seconds to file in uh, from source code but loading it from a compiled library takes about uh, 15 milliseconds so it's over uh, a hundred times faster because it doesn't want to compact source code so uh, this is very efficient in that regard uh, the libraries are also very small. The first one, the minimal one, uh, the prior example, that just some, some math annexes, is uh, 600 bytes. So it's extremely small. This one are a bit bigger, but they are always less than half the size of the source code we used to build them. So they are not bulky and pretty fast to read and install and text. Okay. Yeah, thank you for the talking. I actually did something similar that many other law and one of the things was that I helped something similar to DCL and then I pre-compiled the compiler and then that takes the audit and that compiler can compile stuff in the so that was cool. And but then my question is so what the format of the DCL can it be like a new format or any like new format or it has to be like the same as the mother Unix? There, 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 isn't, there isn't any real need for the format of the DCN. The DCN is just uh, a, a very simple object. There is a, an object DCI that I know that was leverage that should include a collection of class specs and a collection of method specs. And, uh, Anything could be used to say like that. Right now, I'm just using smart reference menu because it's part of the image and it works. Uh, if we wanted to make load types faster, we could use a better serializing serializer like from some few. Okay, but right now I'm just using smart reference tree. It's the basic object file in the squeak hut. Thank you very much for that talk. It's very interesting what you are doing. I'm quite happy to see you are doing that because it proves <laughs> we were more or less in, in sync yeah, in other pattern too. Yeah, that's very cool. Just, I wanted just to clarify one thing. Uh, in the slide from Faro, you say that we cannot uh, uh, write another difference of image formats, and that's incorrect. In fact, we do it on the time. <laughs> the only difference is that we... Uh, what what you do in the uh, plane with image and by without VM maker we do it with VM maker for we extend the VM maker to transform the image formats. <laughs> and what other image formats is uh, for example uh, we need to modify slightly the, the image format for allocating objects of the permanent space for example. And that require a change and we have already done different Slides we we have have not uh, modified radically <laughs> the, the image format for the moment, but we could. And there are experiments that we have done there. The, the only difference of what you do in in quiz we do it in Faro with the VM Maker role. <laughs> but how can say that happen? Uh, but and to, well, me, yes, I do agree. However, that is quite complex. <laughs> I I didn't go. I think. Thank you for that. Yes, I wasn't aware of that. Thank you. Even if the sizes it, you, you will show were pretty small, 100K, 200K, like 200K is a lot of stuff. What, what, what is actually in the HTML? What is actually in there? Yes. These are uh, spur uh, images, and, and this is a spur 64 image. The spur 64 image uh, has um some data structures in the VN it has a glass table made of a ropes table 
and patients that the drinks in dynamically and lead to it. Um, and this modern is is only include the base table and two mandatory pages, one for some reserved special classes known by the VM and another one for the small set of classes we include. And that takes about 60 kilobytes. So, and in, in the SRP2, we image most of the basis I'm going to use by stuff that is mandatory by the VM. Uh, what we build is, uh, I, I can show you later because I need to open a browser and I need five minutes, but I carefully selected um, some classes that are absolutely required for the VM to be able to work and a symbol that I think are highly convenient. But all of this is part of the book track Fagash and its rather small and hopefully easy to understand. So it's trivial to play with your own sets of what you want to do or not and see how the VM grows or, or pass. The problem I always have seen is that it requires a lot of attendance because, uh, for example, I saw in your team on that there was kind of a method that included some very known classes that should be there. And um, also, uh, there are challenges. So, many times you change a class and then run another, you need another class. So, you make a choice that broke all those dependencies. So, I gave you some CI, you know, kind of daily bin, you kind of hard maintaining that. So, anyway, that's. Yes, I told you that happened in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we had a, a Vanessa Furtenberg uh, trying stuff on open on uh, the Squid JS running quiz, and she found a bugger. She found that in some places we were using uh, the incorrect identity hash for classes. So I did a fix for that, and that is very basic functionality. And by bootstrap, immediately broke. I need to add a new method to it. So for the very small image, I don't think it is a big deal because it's very small and we should only control and as the CI would help. But discovering what to include in an application image is a completely different problem. Uh, and I think uh, at least I need new ideas of how to handle that. Right now, this is an exclusive list of things to include. And the focus was on getting it to work and, and make a framework that can grow well.